Hello, I'm Gordon Lane, editor of Cameralabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Canon PowerShot G10. Here it is, the G10. This is the successor to the G9, which makes it Canon's flagship compact camera. This model is targeted at high-end enthusiasts, or people who want a more pocketable alternative to a DSLR. And like its predecessor, it's packed with high-end features. The G10 boasts full manual control, along with aperture and shutter priority. It has a flash hot shoe on the top for mounting one of Canon's Speedlight flash guns. And it also features raw recording facilities to get the most of this camera's potential quality. And in fact, it's the only non-DSLR in Canon's current range which offers raw recording facilities. But of course, all of those were present on the G9, so what's new with the G10? Let's take a look at its highlights. The headline feature of the PowerShot G10 is its new 5x optical zoom range that offers equivalent coverage of 28 to 140mm. This may be shorter than the 6x range of its predecessor, but most importantly of all it equips the G10 with genuine wide angle capabilities. In practice, 28mm is much wider than the 35mm of the G9. Next, the sensor resolution has received an inevitable boost from 12.1 to 14.7 megapixels. This makes the G10 one of the highest resolution compacts around. And to see exactly how much detail it captures in practice, check out our results pages at Cameralabs.com. Around the back, the 3 inch screen is the same size as the earlier G9, but Canon's increased its resolution from 230k to 460k pixels. This allows images in composition and playback to look much more detailed, and the menus also have smoother fonts. This screen is one of the best we've seen on a compact to date, and it also sports a very wide viewing angle, which allows you to still see the screen when you're holding the camera high above your head or at very low angles. Shame it doesn't flip out though. At the heart of the PowerShot G10 is Canon's latest Digic 4 image processor, and this equips the camera with several new features. Face detection has been improved and will now better recognise people as they turn towards profile. There's also a neat new self-timer mode which exploits face detection to wait until a new face appears in the frame before then taking the photo. So perhaps those mad dashes back to the camera in self-timed group shots will be a thing of the past. Digic 4 also brings some changes to the G10's movie mode and you're watching an example of it right now. Sadly there's no high definition movie recording on the G10 but it does now employ the much more efficient H.264 codec. This allows the G10's videos to be about the same quality as before, but occupy around 30% less space. Here's another example of the G10's movie mode, and as you can see it looks very smooth in practice, although sadly you can't optically zoom the lens while filming. Now let's take a closer look at the G10's design and controls. Externally the PowerShot G10 very much resembles its predecessor, although notice the improved grip here. It's slightly larger and makes the camera more comfortable to hold. There's also been some changes in the controls. On the upper left hand side you'll find a new dial dedicated to exposure compensation. Next to that the flash hot shoe and below that the optical viewfinder. And next to this a new two tiered dial with the command dial on the top allowing you to switch the G10 to things like aperture and shutter priority. And below that the newly relocated ISO dial allowing you to quickly and easily change the sensitivity. Around the back of the camera you'll find the same control wheel as before which allows you to very quickly and easily scroll through various options. It's very tactile in use. To the side of the camera behind this door you'll find the ports. At the top a TV output, sadly no high definition output though. Next to that a remote control connector and below that a USB port. On the underside of the camera inside this compartment you'll find the memory card slot which of course takes SD memory cards and a new battery. This actually contains more charge than its predecessor and allows the G10 to take an impressive 400 shots while using its screen. We're outside with the Canon PowerShot G10 so let's press the power button and see how long it takes to power up. That's just over one second and it's ready for action. Now let's check out the optical zoom range of this camera. Here we are zoomed out at an equivalent of 28mm and now zooming in to its maximum 5 times equivalent of 140mm. Now you'll notice a small amount of camera shake there. The G10 features image stabilization. If I just go to the menu system here, turn the thumb wheel until I go up to the IS mode, switch that to continuous and go back to the view, you'll see it now floating there and displaying a much more stabilized view. 
Now the T10 can of course overlay various graphics on the screen. If I press the display button here, you see that I've overlaid a 3x3 alignment grid and also there's a live histogram in the top left corner. Now it's possible to customise which of these graphics you want to see, so you can switch on and off either the grid and or the histogram and or also some 3x2 shooting guides if you prefer. I'm going to press the display button twice to go back to that clean view that we started with. Like other Canon Compacts you can adjust various settings using the overlaid function menu. If I press the function set button here you can see this appear with the various options running down the left hand side. I can then go to whichever options I want to adjust, for example the compression setting here, and then turn the thumb wheel to adjust that as desired. Likewise for things like the resolution. And here at the end of the resolution you'll notice nestled at the end the G10's all important raw recording facilities. One of the best things about the G10 is its full manual control. And I'm going to demonstrate how that works by first of all switching the camera to aperture priority. Now there you'll see the aperture value, the F number there at the bottom of the screen. And if I turn the thumb wheel to the right, you can adjust that value. And you'll also notice this neat graphical scale there showing you exactly where you are in the range. This also applies when you're using shutter priority or manual. There's also a really neat option if you're using the exposure lock facility. Let me just lock it at this point right now and you'll see this other scale pop up here showing the locked shutter speed. So again if I turn that aperture you'll see that exposure which remains locked is moving alongside it. This is a nice graphical representation of what's actually happening in terms of the exposure control. The G10 also features manual focusing facilities. If I press the MF button here to activate these you'll see a distance scale running down the right hand side and now an enlarged view in the middle giving you a closer look at what you're actually focusing on. So now again I can turn the thumb wheel to adjust that focusing distance until I get the manual focusing that I'm after. The Canon PowerShot G10 is one of the most powerful and feature packed compacts we've tested to date. It takes all of those great high-end features of its predecessor like a flash hot shoe, raw recording and full manual control and then adds new features like proper wide angle coverage, a great quality screen and of course that high resolution 14.7 megapixel sensor. But it's not all good news for the G10. It still doesn't feature HD movie recording or any kind of HD output. Those who are familiar with the much older G series models will also remember the f2.0 lens and flip out screen of those models. Sadly, neither present on this new one. It's also worth noting that while the G10's new servo F mode can track motion very effectively, it remains no action camera. G10 only shoots JPEGs at 1.3 frames per second. There's also some tough competition, particularly in the form of Panasonic's Lumix LX3. But of course the big question is how does the image quality of the G10 compare? Can it really capture a lot more detail at its lowest sensitivities and as you increase the ISO, does noise become a problem? Well, to find out, head on over to our full review at CameraLabs.com, where you'll see a full set of results for the G10, which will reveal exactly how much detail it captures, and again, whether there's much compromise with noise at higher sensitivities. We've also, of course, compared the features of the G10 against rival models like the Panasonic LX3. So to find out whether the PowerShot G10 is the ideal high-end compact camera for you, head on over to www.CameraLabs.com. There you'll find our full review, sample images and the latest prices for this camera.